Welcome, Waffle Wolfettes. We are back with a brilliant Lake Seasons greetings on the PlayStation 5. And I hope you guys and girls are having an absolutely fantastic day. Now, in a previous video, we've begun our adventures with Thomas the Mailman and his trusty old mail truck. And we delivered various different letters and parcels. Firstly, we went to a bookstore where we spoke to a woman named Beth. And she told us about visiting us at some point and various different stories about books and cookbooks and encyclopedias. Uh, we then went to the video store and we spoke to Angie who was in the main game. And she basically told us about why she moved to Providence Oaks. And it seems like she moved here because she went through a breakup. And then for some reason she really felt the need to tell us that she was a lesbian for some odd reason when we didn't even ask. Uh, we then visited the garage and we spoke to Laurie and her father and Laurie wanted to work on our truck so we allowed her to mess around with a horn a little bit and she's now nicknamed our van The Goose. And we then came to the motel and we met up with our wife who was being very, very sassy. We've given her a package and we now need to head back to the post office to end the day. So yeah, let's get straight into things. I'll tell you what, I really love him playing this game. It's such a nice peaceful game and it's such a nice game to be playing when it's getting close to Christmas. We picked the perfect time to play this and I think it released I think it released on the PS5 was it November? Or it might have been very early December but we're playing it very close to Christmas so we definitely picked a good time to be playing this. But I'll tell you one thing, I've not got the heating turned on at the moment because I don't really need to because I'm sitting in my room I've got the light boxes on, I've got the PS5 on, I've got the computer on so that's generating enough heat. But despite that, all of this snow everywhere is making me feel very goddamn chilly. Like at the moment, you can't see it, but I'm rubbing my feet together because I'm feeling cold. <laughs> I probably should have put the heating on, but never mind. We don't need no heating. We don't want to spend like £200 a day keeping our houses warm just so British gas can get more and more rich. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I'm with British gas. I think I'm with British gas. Just itching my nose whilst driving. Absolute legend. <laughs> Don't do that on the road. Probably going to end up in an accident. Oh, look, it's the uh, farm. I think that's where uh, Jack lives, ain't it? Yeah, Jack. Yeah, the dude on the radio. I think he lives there. I think I remember going there, actually, and finding a dude with a metal detector in the main game. Yeah, because I think you go there and you meet a dude who's, like, using a metal detector. And I think you've got to find him in various different locations for, like, a gold trophy or something, if I remember correctly. Oh, there we've got Moe's Diner. Very nice. We spent a lot of time there with Meredith. Also went on a date with a lumberjack, didn't we? Yeah, and I think I think Meredith was saying some question, questionable things, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I swear, I swear she was saying something really dodgy. <laughs> or I took it dodgily. She didn't say nothing dodgy, it was just me being filthy, I think. But yeah, I remember saying going on in the diner with that lumberjack guy. We're nearly there now. Well, thinking about it, we've got to pick Meredith up tomorrow. Yeah, it's the 23rd of December in the game currently. And it's obviously going to be Christmas Eve tomorrow. So yeah, I think we're picking up Meredith from the airport. Very nice. From this point onwards, I've got no idea what's going on. Because uh, this is going to be a blind playthrough now. Monday evening. Hello? Hey, Dad. I'm Meredith. What's up? No bad news, I hope. Well, I mean, she did... The way she said, hey, Dad, did sound a little bit bad, didn't it? I don't know if I was hearing that right, but she went, hey, Dad. Yeah, I didn't sound too good. Meredith! What's up? No bad news, I hope. Um... Meredith? Dad, I'm so sorry, but I won't be able to make it tomorrow. What's wrong? What happened? Are you okay? Did your flight get cancelled? I mean, it, it could have got cancelled. There is a lot of snow everywhere. Oh, is it because of the snow? Did your flight get cancelled? Snow? Yes. I mean, I'm snowed under with work. It's added 86. It needs to be up and running at the start of the new year. I stumbled upon some errors today, and now we need to fix them this week. 
sucks. Yeah, because when yeah, because I remember yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah, I remember because when we was playing as Meredith in the main game, she had to finish this uh, edit eighty six, and we could choose whether to work on it or not bother. And Steve kept ringing us up, even though we were technically on holiday, taking a break here to take over the mail job for a bit. And uh, Steve kept pestering us over and over again. And at the end of the game, I chose to stay in Providence Oaks as a mail woman instead of uh, going back to wherever uh, Meredith is from. Yeah, yeah, Steve was a fucking arsehole, he was. Yep, sure does. Is that guy Steve pressuring you again? No, never never put your work over your family. Obviously, you need to make money to support your family, but there's got to be a balance. Don't, don't put work over your family. It's a stupid thing to do. Yep, it sure does. Is that Steve guy pressuring you again? No, it's not Steve's fault. We've all worked so hard this year... Can't squander it all in the last week, right? Mm, yeah, but let's see how you're feeling when your mum and dad die and you've spent your entire life at work for some arsehole that don't care about you and underpays you as well. Then we'll see how guilty you feel and you've got to live with the guilt for the rest of your life and it's not going to be fun, is it? You're right, Meredith. Your career lasts a lifetime. You're right, Meredith. Christmas is just a few days. Your career lasts a lifetime. Have you told your mom yet? I just called her at the motel. Oh, someone's calling. It must be your mom. Okay, well, that's my cue. Gotta get back to it. I'll call again soon, Dad. Love you. I'll pause it hey, a sec. Um... Yeah, I, I didn't actually want to say that. I thought he was going to say it in a sarcastic way. <laughs> I thought he was going to say something a bit different. I actually just supported Meredith then. I should have picked the top option and said... Uh, yeah, well, whatever the top option was. Yeah, I picked the wrong option there. I screwed up. Sorry. Is that you? <laughs> if by M you mean Emily, then yes. If you mean M for Meredith, then no. <laughs> <laughs> I just got off the phone with my other M, so I was pretty sure it was you. <laughs> oh, Thomas. Don't joke around as if nothing's wrong. I know, Em. I don't know what to say. I know, Em. I don't know what to say. Well, just deal with it, like we always do. Why don't we invite someone else? Unless you're happy with just Mildred coming over. Oh, no, Mildred? Did and Beth, did and Beth talk about Mildred? Yeah, Beth of the bookstore talked about Mildred, and she made it sound like Mildred was an absolute nightmare. Probably like the Mildred from George and Mildred, that George and Mildred, that very old uh, sitcom in the UK. <laughs> oh no, we've got to bring someone better. Just Mildred, why not ask Nancy too? I don't know who Nancy is, so I can't even really... Do I know who Nancy is? Maybe, I don't know. Good idea, I'll think about it. Yeah, let, let, let us pick someone to bring. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'll think about it and maybe invite someone tomorrow. Okay, honey. As long as you don't invite Jack, you know, his jokes may even scare off the turkey. <laughs> In any case, I'll call Beth and ask her again, too. And then I have to do a towel run, refill the vending machine, and vacuum the reception area. So it'll be a while before I'm done. I'll see you tonight, honey. Okay, Em. Drive home safe. That is outrageous that she's got to do all that. That sounds a lot. Of that sounds like a cleaner's job. And also, you can't invite Beth, because Beth is going to see her son and his wife for the holidays. So, you know, you, you can't, uh, you can't be seeing, you can't be inviting Beth. <laughs> also, two pe three people that love books. Oh, God, what a boring Christmas that would be. <laughs> oh, stay home and watch TV, stay home and read a book. <laughs> we probably should do that if Mildred's going to be coming around. Now nah, we're going to watch TV. Oh, no, there's a picture of, uh, I guess that's uh, Mild um, find a Mild Meredith. Oh, come on, Chief. You know I don't need nobody's help. He's from Germany. Hamburg, to be exact. A German? Oh, for Christ's sakes. Stop complaining, Fries, and go pick up that hamburger from the airport. <laughs> ah, Christmas Eve. And we're all, oh, bloody hell, how many packages do you want me to deliver? Fuck. 
fucking hell. <laughs> oh, Christmas Eve, lovely. Hey, Ann, can we speak to Jack? I'm going to invite Jack to dinner if it lets me. I'm guessing I can't speak to him, only when you've got stuff to deliver. Hey, Jack! Oh, you can't. Oh. Oh, it's Frank. Hey, Thomas. You think it'll ever stop snowing? I'm glad it's the last day before Christmas break. Well, sorry, Frank. They're forecasting snow until at least the new year. But hey, about Christmas. Oh. Huh. Are there any good basketball games scheduled? Maybe you'd like to help us eat our food. I really want to bring Jack. I really want to bring Jack. Yeah, we're, we're going to bring Jack just to cause a bit of drama. You know why? Because our wife was being sassy with us in the previous video. So I feel like, yeah, and also she keeps going to work and leaving poor Thomas on his own. So we're going to invite Jack just to sassy her up a bit. Are there any good basketball games scheduled? Good games? Are you kidding me? The Knicks are playing the Celtics at MSG. I think the Celtics will go all the way this year, but I wouldn't count out an upset at the Garden. I'm not going to give you betting advice, Frank. I'm going to have to sleep on it, but you know I can't pass up a juicy bet. Have a good one, Thomas. Yeah, we know you can't pass up a juicy bet. Caused us a lot of problems in the previous game. Well, in the main game, I should say. I always keep thinking this is a sequel. <laughs> or a prequel. Well, I guess it kind of is, but it's not. It's just DLC. Morning, P.O. It's time for a different take on the snowfall. P.O. positive <laughs> or pet peeve? Take it away, Charles. Jack, I'd like to respond what Cheryl said about the snow yesterday. Sure, it makes everything nice and quiet, but we can't forget... The sweet sound of crunching snow beneath our boots. Thank you very much. Sure we can, Charles. And that's the last one about snow for now. Apologies to the guy with the pet peeve about, well, yellow snow. Better luck next time. Today's weather as bright and beautiful as yesterday. Enjoy the crunch, folks. Back to the playlist. No, we won't be going back to no playlist, Jack. We turn the music off. <laughs> oh, lovely. The general store. We are on Main Street. How many packages we got to deliver? One, two, three, four. Let's have a look if I've got any others from Main Street. I don't see a number. Oh, we've only got one. Oh, we've got to go to Reynolds Farm anyway. Yeah, see, they've literally given me a package to go to Reynolds Farm. They wanted me to invite Jack. We're bringing Jack. <laughs> I love how he picks up the uh, packages. It's like he's Spider-Man. He just goes, whoosh, and he picks up the bloody packages. Watch when I open the truck next. He, d they don't, he doesn't pick them up. They float up into his hands like he's Spider-Man. I don't know what happened with that car when the radio was playing. That flipping car just disintegrated like he got snapped out of existence by Vanot Thanos. Oh, I love that bell. Nice. Now, oh, God, you was not very happy, was you, Nancy? Greetings, Nancy. Hello, Thomas. That should be the last batch of Christmas pudding ingredients. Hmm, sounds good. Is it for you or for the store? <laughs> All right, have a good day. These are so flipping rude. Hmm, sounds good. Is it for you or for the store? For the store, of course. I'm not going to change my cooking schedule just because of Christmas. But isn't that the best part of Christmas? Yeah, damn well it is. I've got a cooking schedule. I eat the same thing five days a week, and then on Friday and Saturday I eat like whatever I want, takeaway, stuff like that. Cheat days, I guess you would call it. But uh, yeah, I eat the same thing every single day, five days a week. And I love Christmas when I don't have to eat that shit again. <laughs> I can eat what I want, just crap. But isn't that the best part of Christmas? I'd rather save myself the time and effort. Oh, you're a flipping absolute who ain't you, Nancy? Fair enough, have a good day. So you don't change your cooking schedule at all? So you don't change your cooking schedule at all? Not now, not ever. Monday's mac and cheese, chili on Tuesday, meatloaf Wednesday, cheeseburger Thursday, fish Fridays, Saturday steak and mash, and it's corn on the cob Sundays. You've had this schedule for a while now? Ah, I see. And you've had this schedule for a while now? 
A little over 20 years. Oh, Jesus, that is dedication, that is. If it works, it works. For mercy's sake, 20 years of chili on Tuesday. That's gonna set your ass on fire. For mercy's sake, 20 years of chili on Tuesday. They're a healthy addition to any diet. And tasty. No, 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 they're not. Let's not tell lies. If only they were as tasty as they are healthy. If only they were as tasty as they are healthy. I'll be on my way now. Yeah, we can smell your chilly breath from here. Actually, what day is it? It's chill. It is Tuesday. I don't know if you've had, I don't know if, I don't know what time of day it is, but yeah, it's chilly Tuesday. We can smell your breath from here, mixed in with those filthy cigarettes. Disgusting. What a horrible combination. Cigarettes and chili. Oh, that is fucking awful. Now, do not kiss Nancy anytime soon. Okay, this looks like a random house. I don't think we've ever been here before. Normally when you go up to these houses, nobody actually answers, do they? <laughs> he just does what the Amazon drivers do and dump it on the door and walk off. They've been do Since the pandemic started, they've been doing that constantly. 103 E 1st Street. But since the pandemic happened and they was like, you know, not being in contact with anybody. They, uh, they've been dumping it on the doorstep, but they don't even knock. Like, the amount of times Amazon just leaves shit on my door now and don't even knock. And I live right next to a school. So hundreds of people walk past my door. So it could be so easily be stolen. Ridiculous. But then again, I've got a German Shepherd sign on the door. So maybe that puts them off stealing it. And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, don't let Sammy out. <laughs> Not that Sammy would do anything. That's probably a bad... And yet another satisfied customer. Now, they're going to be annoyed. They're going to leave you a one-star review. That is literally how long they wait for you to answer the door as well. The only people I have good experience with that I can always rely on is DPD. But then again, they've been a little bit iffy lately. But Royal Mail. The only problem with Royal Mail is sometimes they seem to just lose my package. But when it comes to delivering the actual delivery blokes, they're legends. Always come at the same time. Always happy. Always jolly. Yeah, they're absolute legends, they are. The people that work in the sorting office at Royal Mail, though, you need to sort yourself out. Stop losing my stuff, you cheeky devils. I've had two games go missing this year. One of them was Atlas Fallen, which I never even played. I just got a refund. And the other one was Assassin's Creed Mirage. And I got a replacement sent with that one. Hey, that boulder just appeared again. You see that? There's a weird boulder over here that just sort of floats into uh, the abyss. So it's sort of weird glitch. at the right door oh oh it's that one oh i think the map zoomed out a little bit when i was driving made it look like it was the other one sweet imagine doing this for a job though oh, when i used to do my paper round which i spoke about when i did the main game it, it was always nice, you know, you get, obviously you have to get up early, which sucks a bit sometimes. And you, I never had any days off, which also sucked. <laughs> it was every day I had to do the job. And I only got paid 23, uh, was it a, a, a month? No, a week. Yeah, 23 pound a week I got paid. So it was pretty good. But uh, not for the amount of flipping papers now I had to deliver. But it was always nice at like half five in the morning or six o'clock. Especially when it's cold and everybody's, you know, just not a bat. Just delivering papers. Very nice. Probably my favourite job, to be honest. Oh, we don't need to get any packages. It's a letter. Whoops. All right, we've got a few more to do around here. Another parcel. And then it looks like we're going to be taking a service station over there. What's that? Is that... Oh, that might be the fisherman. Oh, and that's going to be... Yeah, that's going to be yeah, Reynolds Farm. God, there's a woman at work with the second name Reynolds. 
No comment. <laughs> no comment. Oh, I think we might be heading to Grove Street. Yeah, look, it's Grove Street. What's up, CJ? Heron Circle. Feels like I'm going around in circles sometimes. Yeah, cool story, Thomas, but it's not called Heron Circle. It's called Grove Street, mate. And CJ lives over there, and Big Smoke lives, I guess, there. He <laughs> just put on his glasses. Cos like my mum and dad, they do that all the time now. They're only in their bloody 50s. You, they, they both act like they're in their 80s. You need to sort it out, they do. Both of them. You need to pull their finger out. Getting a little bit uh, a little bit disappointed with their uh, their antics lately. They're becoming such old people. Do not cry. Hey, let's see, even the car's green, see? Grove Street, like I said, told you. Just don't cause any trouble, Thomas. Just drive away, just drive away. Don't make eye contact with anybody. Maybe we should invite Angie for, uh... Is she in there? Yep, she is in there. Maybe we should invite Angie for dinner. Nah, because we all know what she'll talk about when she arrives, so nah, we'll invite, we'll, we'll keep with Jack, just because our wife didn't want us to, because we are the biggest troll on the planet. Oh, this is, um, this is Meredith's friend's house. Yeah, because she, did, she didn't like Meredith, did she? She was pissed with Meredith because Meredith moved away. She was like her best friend at school or something. Crazy hour, I remember all this stuff. Certain games, I can't remember Here's a single thing. Here's hoping. But with this game, I seem to have remembered a lot of stuff. Oh. Someone's been building a little snowman. Very nice. Oh, good day, Kay. Hi, Thomas. I've got a parcel for you. Ah, thanks. I'm sure Mo, uh, Santa will be happy this arrived just in time. <laughs> Anything I can do to help the old man out. How are things with the family? Uh, how are things with the family? Good. Good. Really looking forward to the holidays. I've been making Grace this great big space station out of ply. It's coming together really nicely. And Barry is getting Max a second-hand guitar as we speak. Oh, that sounds great. I'm sure they can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> Neither can I. Uh, what about you and Emily? Got anything special planned for the coming days? Well, sadly, Meredith can't make it this year. You know, just dinner with the family. And Mildred. <laughs> I'll say this one, because I swear she was a bit salty about Meredith. Well, sadly, Meredith can't make it this year. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was very salty. Because I think we, when we delivered the package to her, she was like a bit, a bit salty with us, maybe. And then eventually we made friends with her and she cheered her up. And then didn't she do some like comedy show or some singing or something? I can't remember, something like that. I'm sure she'll make it out here sometime. I'm sure she'll make it out here sometime. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I'd best get on. I have to check on the oven. Or Santa will have to eat charcoal when he stops by tonight. <laughs> All right. Best get back to it myself. Give our love to Barry and the kids. And Santa, if you happen to see him. Will do. You and Emily have a great Christmas too, okay? <laughs> yeah, she's not happy about Meredith at all, is she? You can't be like that. That's just what happens when you get older and you leave school, you leave college, you, you leave university. That's what happens, you know? You're still friends. I haven't spot Christmas lighting really necessary. <laughs> you should see my house, uh, you should see my house, um, Thomas. You'd be absolutely gobsmacked. We got, we got, yeah, yeah, well, I, I don't. It's my mum and dad that do it. They definitely go crazy with the lights. 
the brightest flipping, uh, the brightest house in the entire village. Not village, town, whatever you want to call it. Oh. But yeah, I've got uh, mates that I've not spoken to since I left school, and I still consider them mates, and I left school in 2008. I still consider them mates. If they ever rung me up and needed me for anything, I'd be there, you know? Any emergencies happened, and they was just out of the blue. Hey, David, we need your help. I'll be there, you know? Simple. Unless they wanted money. They didn't kiss my ass. They ain't getting no money from me. <laughs> Don't speak to me for like 15 years and then ask me for money. You think I am? Yeah, it's something like that. They didn't go fuck themselves. But yeah, if there's like an emergency, you know, like they needed help with their... Well, one of them's got kids now. If, what, if they needed help with their kids or something like that or, you know, or you know, they were stranded somewhere or there was a mass murderer chasing them, then yeah, I'd, I'd be there. Definitely. Even for some of you guys and girls, I would as well. Some of you guys and girls I've been talking to for years now. Especially people like Tom Wolf, Macabre Gamer, people like that. Steve King. That I talk to outside of YouTube now. Legends. Right, looks like we've got one more letter to do. I think this is at the... What is that over there? I don't know if it was like some weird popping, but it looked like a burnt out, burnt down building then. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Bert's out of town for the holidays. But he did ask me to keep an eye on his place. Seems to be in order. Oh, well. <laughs> did we have to try and persuade him to watch a movie? Oh, yeah, because we did that mission for Angie with Meredith, didn't we? And we was delivering videotapes. And then we had to pick them up as well. Speaking of delivery, I think I just heard Royal Mail's little buzzer thing that they do when they're scanning the old package. So there might be a knock in a second. I might have to run downstairs. There we go. Nope. Nope, no knock. Don't even know if I'm waiting for any packages, to be honest. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I am. No, I am. I'm waiting for uh, another thing to unbox on YouTube. I don't even know if that's been dispatched yet. Spoiler, it's a stray plush from Fangamer. Which uh, I'm going to unbox and then give to my sister. All right. Over to Reynolds Farm. And let's tell Jack that he's about to come to our house. I bet he's going to tell us he's busy, ain't he? If, if he's busy and he can't come for some reason, we'll go and ask, um, uh, what's his face? The guy that works for us, the guy that we work for, our boss. I forgot his name already. <laughs> we'll go and ask him to come instead, the gambler, the troublemaker. Oh, flip it out. Well, I'm so sorry, Thomas. I don't know how the hell I managed to do that. Fucking hit a telephone pole. What are you lot all doing up here? Maybe they've been buying their turkeys. I mean, it is a farm after all. Nah, that popping is not very good. Just letting him, just letting him know I'm here. Just letting him know. He might be busy on the radio. Oh, better get the bloody package first. Oh, look at those little birds. Wow, a visit from the Poker King. I humbly thank you for the honor. The pleasure is all mine, sir, and this package is yours. He hath brought a parcel for Jack of all trades. The Poker King hath brought a parcel for the Jack of all trades. Who boy, Frank came through once again. Ah, package from Frank, huh? I don't want to know what's in it. Oh, Frank's our boss, isn't he? 
What's in it? What's in it? You don't want to know, Thomas. You don't want to know. But what I will tell you, I'm kicking off the new year with a bang. <laughs> I better put this somewhere dry. And then it's back to reading Doyle Brunson's super system. Ooh, you're in trouble this Sunday, sir. Oh, yeah, we're doing a poker game, ain't we? Yeah, we're doing a poker game on the, uh, I think it's the 29th of December or something. And if it's going off of a bat, he's got fireworks, isn't he? It's either a gun or he's got fireworks. Oh, if this if this game ends with a with a New Year's Eve, oh yeah, New Year's Eve, maybe that's when the game ends. Then, oh nice. Okay, glad I can blame the cold for my shaking hands. And what are you doing tomorrow night? Yeah, that's what we need to know. And what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm gonna visit my brother and his family in Idaho. Anyway, later, Thomas, and take care on those icy roads. Oh, what the hell? Oh, God damn it! <laughs> well, now I guess we have to speak to Frank. That means I've not invited anybody. It's going to make it seem like Thomas don't have any friends. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thomas. Maybe we should have asked Frank. For God's sake, I wanted to bring Jack. I knew he was going to be bloody busy. I just had a feeling. I would you do that for, White Fawn Games. I'm disappointed in that. Nah, I'm, I'm, that's ruined my day. Might cancel the entire playthrough now. I've got no idea what these two are doing over here. I don't know if they've had some sort of collision or if their cars are broke down. No idea, but they need to move. Right, I'm going to uh, get out of my truck and walk up to the um, the post office to see if I can speak to Frank. I've got to end the video, but it's all good. But I'm not going to end the day because uh, there'll be it's, it's going to be Christmas, ain't it? So there'll be a whole load of stuff that happens and I'll, I've got to end the video now, so I won't be able to do that. Just hopefully me walking up to the post office doesn't count as me returning. Hopefully I've got to take my car with my truck. In fact, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to end the video now. <laughs> just in case. And then we'll see if we can speak to Frank and then we'll do the whole Christmas stuff. Because if I don't speak to Frank now, that means I won't be bringing no one to Christmas. Right, we'll park here. Alright. Thanks for watching Wolf Movers. Hopefully you've enjoyed these first two episodes of Lake. Hopefully the commentary has been alright and there's been uh, some nice funny good moments and all that good stuff. And yeah, let me know in the comments as always. But yeah, like, share and join the pack today. D. D. Load.